let's check into this uh, whole bridge debacle. I'm hearing some stuff too. You know, people are already saying some stuff. You know, I don't, I don't know what's up, but. Uh. Hello, thank you for joining us. We begin our report at the remnants of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. NTSB drone footage shows the cargo ship that took down much of a 1.6 mile long structure. Its bow girdled in steel crazy. and stacked with asphalt. CBS crews captured video of its on-ramp, which now leads only to reminders of disaster. Handheld and drone cameras are used to capture photos before cleanup. The start to what is expected to be a two-year investigation. Also a part of phase one, conducting interviews with the ship staff, reviewing the ship's Voyager data recorder, engine data, manufacturer information, and inspection and maintenance history. Then at least six specialized teams pieced together. They said it just happened somewhere else, for too. A report containing with a ship running and into sequence of events. And finally, bunch the NTSB of, uh, will uh, issue safety recommendations, though those could off. come earlier in I this case. It. Chris Van Cleve has the latest. From the water, the scope of the accident is enormous. The cargo ship Dolly is almost as long as the Chrysler building in New York City is tall. The wreckage sits where it fell early Tuesday morning, blocking access to one of the nation's busiest ports. We're surveying the damage with the commander of the Army Corps of Engineers. The president called me yesterday and we spoke for a few minutes and he made it clear this was the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers' number one priority. Will this be an around-the-clock effort? We're going to go 24-7. That sounds like a massive effort. It is a massive effort. General Scott President calling directly. Crews from the Navy and Person. to begin the salvage efforts to clear the waterway and allow divers to recover the remaining four bodies believed to be trapped beneath the rubble. Mm. It's not just all this debris that you can see in this massive cargo that's a ship. Horrible it's horrible Everything that's sunk to the bottom, tons of debris that's 50 feet down, it all has to come off the floor before this channel and the port of Baltimore can reopen. Already, there is a traffic jam of cargo ships unable to get in or out of the port of Baltimore, plus two cruise ships that won't be able to return to the Charm City port that employs 8,000 people. Oh this God. is a core economic engine for our state, and we have to make sure that our workers are protected. New video shows traffic early Tuesday morning on the Francis Scott Key Bridge and that construction crew filling potholes moments before the dolly slammed into it. And now, our first look on board the giant vessel as NTSB investigators work to gather evidence and continue interviews with the ship's 21-person crew. The Dolly's voice data recorder shows about 90 seconds after the first sign of trouble, the onboard pilot called for help, asking nearby tugboats to respond. Less than a minute later, the mayday call. Then, the devastating collision. The damage on board is extensive. Part of the bridge came down on the bow, leaving a deep gash. Cargo containers with hazardous material sit sheared oh, open. God. When you get out here on the water and you look at that, you really get a sense for the massive effort that we're dealing with. And it, this is. The oh. Corps of Engineers has to clear a 700 foot wide channel to get the port back open. This is going to take millions or billions is to clean the up. largest floating crane on the East Coast overnight. <laughs> it can lift up to a thousand tons, but they think the piece of bridge laying across the ship weighs three or four times that. John. Chris Van Cleve. Thank you, Chris. The NTSB says more than 30,000 vehicles used to cross the bridge daily. When it collapsed, it was the construction workers repairing the road to keep cars flowing who fell into the water. Two rescued, six dead. Nicole Jeez. Skanga has more on the lives of the victims. Baltimore County police survey the wreckage from 1,200 feet. Nothing prepares you for a boat colliding into the bridge. Even after you see it. And it, it's still just so surreal. In the hours after the collapse, this thermal conspiracy theorist comment in the comment section. That was our main focus that night around 4 a.m. Uh, when we first got here, was utilizing the thermal imaging just to try to locate anybody. Transmitting real time images like some these people were saying that ground. even if the ship vehicle, does lose power, it can still Maryland steer. State police so they couldn't figure out like, what's Alejandro going on. Hernandez Fuentes I don't know if it's true or not. Cabrera out of the river. But divers are unable to reach the four people still missing. Because of the amount of concrete and debris, divers are no longer able, able to safely navigate or operate around that. Tonight, we're learning more about the victims. The brother of minor Yasir Suazo Sandoval tells CBS News he wishes he could have stopped his brother from going to work. 
Moises Diaz was scheduled to fill potholes on the key bridge Tuesday, but That's his shift sad, was man. changed. Every day we give thanks to God for life, Diaz tells us. He's grieving the loss of six fellow construction workers, men he calls brothers. I saw my friends as family members. And Diaz tells us the miraculous story of his friend Julio Cervantes, one of two rescued. He says Cervantes escaped his sinking truck by crawling out the window. He thought, I'm going to die here. Even though he can't swim, he survived. Wow. Nicole Skanga joins me now from Baltimore. Nicole, what are the victims' families telling you? John, the victims' families right now are in absolute agony. So are their friends and this very tight-knit community that we have come to know. I spoke with Moses Diaz. He was a construction worker who called uh, all of these victims brothers. He was supposed to work on the bridge Tuesday morning, filling potholes and had a shift change at the last minute. And he wow. met with one of the survivors, Julio Cervantes, just yesterday and told us his unbelievable escape story that he was in his vehicle when the bridge collapsed and sunk down, submerged in water, crawling through the window of his truck in order to escape. Didn't know how to swim, but miraculously floated to the debris where paramedics retrieved Yo, him. Yeah, he is he lucky. He is suffering from chest injuries and has stitches on his leg, but is now stable. And the real message that Moses Diaz told us tonight is that Many of these immigrant families, uh, you know, who, who are, some have been in the country for quite some time, some less time, uh, really feel as though their stories are being overlooked, that everyone is focused on the bridge, but they are... It looks like Godzilla here. Beyond just the physical Don't injuries it? right now that uh, Julio Cervantes wow. is dealing with, the deepest pain is his trauma, and, you know, Moses Diaz telling us that he can't stop Picturing the bridge collapse, seeing it in his mind play out over and over Of course. Again. Oh. And Nicole, you also flew with police to survey the scene. What did you see? Yeah, we flew with the Baltimore County Police Department. These were some of the first pilots up in the air in the early hours after the bridge collapsed. And they showed us with infrared technology how they desperately scoured for victims but were unable to find them. Now they're assisting uh, first responders, teams on the ground, and, and soon uh, some of these salvage efforts and just giving them real-time pictures from 1,200 feet above, um, you know, they, right now, you can see just massive amounts of debris. The ship obviously lodged under, uh, you know, just tons of this forever. bridge. You know, that there are cranes that are being moved right now that can lift up to 1,000 tons. So waiting on that. Uh, but we also saw floating containers, some sheen on the water, obviously concerns from NTSB and other federal and local authorities about hazardous materials right now. Uh, all of this, this adding just... up to a really long road ahead. A big John. damn mess. Thank you. You know what's making me think? What's it going to do to the economy over there? Like how much will it affect it? Um, you got all these ships that need to get in there and do what they need to do. You got cruise ships that can't dock. Guess they're going to have to dock somewhere else and set up arrangements to be picked up or whatever. Um, and look, and people are saying it's not terrorism. I don't know where it was or not. Some people are saying it's, um, it was, uh, you know, kind of like they were hacked, like, um, you know, some type of power grid type of attack. So they hacked their power or whatever and caused that to happen. I, I don't know. Um, I, I just don't know. I, I'm seeing so much that I don't know. You know, people are sending me videos all over the place. I, I don't know. I just think it's sad. And I'm just like, wow. You know, I've thought about stuff like that because I live near a bridge. And uh, I've always thought, because this bridge actually opens for ships to pass. I'm like, what would happen if it didn't open and the ship, you know, hit it? Like, what type of clean, clean up? Like, what would that look like? And how long would it take to fix and build a new bridge? I guess I found out with this. I mean, this is... This is crazy. I just... Mm. Post comments down below. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if y'all got any more details.